I have both the Coleman Montana 8% tint and the Red Canyon 8% tint and in this video I'll show you all the differences between these two tints. The Red Canyon 8% tint took me about 20 and a half minutes to set up on my own, while the Montana 8% tint took me 22 minutes. The Montana took me slightly longer for two reasons. First, I had these two extra fiberglass poles to fix up the hinged D-door. There's one pole for the straight side of the door, and the other one is for the curved side of the door. And second, I also had to set up the rainfly pole. I had to first insert it into the pole sleeve of the rainfly and secure it with four velcro attachments. Then after getting the rainfly up, I had to bend the fiberglass pole, secure each end of the pole, hook up these as hooks, then stake out the extended edges of the rainfly. All of this took a couple extra minutes. On the other hand, the takedown and pack away for both tents is about the same. The 8-person Red Canyon took me 14 minutes, while the 8-person Montana took me 14 and a half minutes, so about the same. But take note of this one important difference in the carry bag. For the Montana, I could easily expand the provided carry bag by ripping out this strip at the bottom of the bag. However, for the Red Canyon, I couldn't do so, which I thought was a little bit weird. So I recommend folding it up as neatly as possible. But one great thing about the Red Canyon carry bag is that it's actually slightly higher quality and thicker than the Montana carry bag, which looks like this instead. For spaciousness, both tents are quite similar in terms of peak height and tent shape. The peak heights in the Red Canyon and the Montana 8-person tents are 73 inches and 74 inches respectively, and both tents have an extended dome shape with the peak height only at the center of the tent. When I take three small steps away from the peak height in either tent, my head would touch the mesh at the top of the tent. But there's a huge, huge difference in the base dimensions of both tents. For the Montana 8-person tent, I measured the length to be about 15 feet and 4 inches and the width to be about 6 feet and 9 inches and I calculated the total base area to be about 103.5 square feet which fits 8 pads side by side with no leftover space. On the other hand, for the Red Canyon 8-person tent, I measured the longest length to be 16 feet and 4 inches and the longest width to be about 9 feet and 7 inches for a total base area of about 140.6 square feet. I could easily fit 8 sleeping pads into the tent, still with leftover space at the sides of the tent for some gear or maybe even 2 more pads. My Montana 8-person tent has a nice little porch area which measures about 103 inches in length and about 32 inches in width, and this is something the Red Canyon doesn't have. It provides quite a bit of shading from the hot sun, so you can put gear here as well. I liked that it kept my flip-flops cool instead of superheating it. While both my Montana and Red Canyon tents have only one door each, I much prefer the door on the Montana because it's this awesome hinge door. Complete with a handle outside and inside the tent, it's really like a regular door and I don't have to fumble with any annoying zippers to get in and out of the tent. I can even keep this door open by pushing it behind this black fiberglass pole here. On the other hand, I had to use the zippers on the Red Canyon door as well as these two door latches by the side if I wanted to leave the door open. The Red Canyon 8-person tent has two room dividers while the Montana doesn't have any. You can put up these two dividers at the two sides of the tent and here's what it will look like. In the middle, you can fit four regular sleeping pads or two double pads and behind each divider you can fit either a double pad or two separate pads but nothing bigger so the space behind each divider is really minimal. And also, there's no zip down the middle for easy access into either room so I had to take down one of the latches and then climb over the divider which is so not user friendly and I can't say that I'm a huge fan of this. There are slight differences to the storage options in each tent. While both these 8-person tents have two pockets and one lantern loop each, the Red Canyon comes with an extra gear loft at the top of the tent. It also comes with this pre-attached string that you can use as a clothesline, and it's my only Coleman tent to come with a clothesline. However, my Red Canyon doesn't come with an e-port, though the Montana comes with this e-port at the bottom of the tent with a zippered closure. For hot day ventilation, I took the rainfly off each tent and calculated the amount of mesh there is on the tent. The better ventilated 8-person tent on a hot day is the Red Canyon with ceiling mesh plus 4 more windows 
for a total of about 3,300 square inches of window ventilation. The Montana 8-person tent also has a decent amount of ceiling mesh, but there are only three windows, which are not very big, for a total of about 2,200 square inches of ventilation. This is just two-thirds the amount of ventilation in the Red Canyon and can definitely be improved, especially by installing another window on this last wall here. For rainy day ventilation, I looked at the number of windows and vents that can be left open in the heavy rain. And well, let me just say that both tents didn't do very well for this. While the Red Canyon 8 person tent has three vents inside the tent, they are all pretty tiny so there's not a lot of ventilation. And as for my Montana tent, this doesn't have any ventilation at all because no windows can be opened and there are also no vents. If you're wondering how both these tents did in the rain test, I would say that they are about the same, staying dry for about 15 minutes each before the first drop of water got into the tent. For the Montana tent, while it looks like it has a decently long rainfly length, notice that this part isn't covered by the rainfly at all and it's where it first leaked. As for the Red Canyon tent, while the rainfly for this tent is extended at the sides of the tent, the front of this tent has a really short rainfly length and it's where it leaked first. But the reason why these tents leaked is because Coleman inverts their seams instead of taping their seams. So if you seal these seams, these tents should be able to last at least a couple of hours under heavy rain before leaking. For portability, the Montana 8 is not only a little bit heavier but also a little bulkier than the Red Canyon 8. The Montana weighs 23.4 pounds while the Red Canyon weighs 20.2 pounds. Also, the Montana has a packed size of 26 by 15 by 12 inches, which is about 30% bigger than the Red Canyon which has a packed size of 26 by 13 by 10 inches. For pricing, I found both these 8-person Coleman tents to be equally affordable. If I remember correctly, I think I paid about the same price for both tents, around about 150 bucks. This is actually really affordable for an 8-person family camping tent. If you found this video helpful so far, could you help me smash that like button? I would really appreciate it. Anyway, overall, both the Red Canyon and Montana are great value for money family camping tents. I mean, for like 150 bucks, I think it's pretty good value. But if I had to pick just one, I actually prefer the Red Canyon a little better. The biggest reason is the humongous base area inside the Red Canyon. I mean, the base area is so huge, it's like 37 square feet bigger than my Montana, and this base area is almost as big as my Weathermaster 10. I mean, just check out the base area of the Red Canyon compared to my Coleman 10 person tents. It's pretty amazing, right? On top of that, from my testing, the Red Canyon also has better hot day ventilation and rainy day ventilation than the Montana. It also comes with two dividers, a gear loft, and a clothesline, which the Montana doesn't have, so it's pretty feature rich. But the Montana has a hinged D door, an E port, and also the front porch, which the Red Canyon doesn't have. And I really do like the hinged door a lot. Just bear in mind the biggest con of the Red Canyon. It has these thin rainfly fiberglass poles and one of them snapped on my first use, so I highly recommend bringing along these inexpensive tent repair pole splints, which costs only a few extra bucks, so not a super big deal to me. In summary, if you prefer having more space in your tent, go with the Red Canyon. On the other hand, if you don't mind having a little less space, but you like all the features of the front porch, hinged door, and the e-port, go with the Montana. To find out how the Montana and Red Canyon compare against my 12 other Coleman tents, I highly recommend that you watch this video here. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.